What's going on everybody? Hope you're all having a fantastic day today. Now today, we're going to be discussing a game that I absolutely fell in love with, and I think a ton of you guys are going to fall in love with as well, and that is Hell Let Loose. Now, yesterday's video about Squad was primarily for PC players, but as promised, today's video is strictly for everybody out there. If you have a PlayStation, an Xbox, a PC, it truly does not matter. This game is going to be available for you. Now, the funny thing about this game is that I refused to play it for such a long time, almost daily, for months on end. People have been coming into my live streams or just in my YouTube comment section telling me, JB, check out Hell Let Loose. This game is fantastic. You like this game, you like that game, you'll definitely like this game then. And I just never got around to it. I always thought in the back of my head that I already have Squad, which is a milsim, which is pretty much what Hell Let Loose is, and it's modern day. That's all I could ever ask for, right? Well, little did I know, this is probably one of the best experiences I've played in a very long time. And I'm shocked because, once again, it's a World War II game. That's why I didn't want to try it out because I'm like, yo, I can play Modern Day Mill Sims. I can play Insurgency Sandstorm. I can play Squad. There's so many different games out there. Why will I bounce back to World War II? But truly, this is a very underrated title. And I got to say, as much as I love Squad to death, I suggest and recommend Hell Let Loose 1,000 times more to any Call of Duty player or any Battlefield player out there who is trying to get introduced into a Milsim-styled experience. And the reason that I say this is because Squad is such a hard and in-depth game to get into. And yes, if you invest tons of hours into the, you know, the game itself, you'll get used to it, you'll learn it, you'll understand it. But at the end of the day, the way the maps are designed and the game is played, it's very slow. You're going to be sitting there and you're going to get five kills for, you know, a full hour-long match and anybody who comes from the Battlefield or Call of Duty scene who's used to getting like 20, 30 kills minimum in a long match, that's going to be a massive drastic change for them. And also coming from games like Call of Duty and Battlefield where the button layouts are very minimal, you know, you only have a few keys or buttons to press for equipment, shooting, aiming, running, it's not that much you have to memorize. But transferring over to a game like Squad, it's super complex. There's so many keys for different things, and especially being a commander in that game, you know, the list never ends with possible things to learn. But some people don't want that. They want to hop into a game, completely understand it after a couple of matches, and be able to get into the flow of the whole experience, and Squad doesn't do that for you. But Hell Let Loose does. Two games after purchasing this title, and the first game wasn't even a complete match. It was halfway through, and the second game was a complete match. And I already completely understood everything in this title. Not to mention that it's ten times more arcadier than any other Milsim I possibly played. Even compared to a game like uh, Insurgency Sandstorm, which was another tactical or Milsim type shooter, which I think is a little good for Call of Duty players. I think it's much better than Squad is. But even this game right here, Hell Let Loose, is a little bit more arcadier than Insurgency Sandstorm. But even though it's arcadey and fast-paced, and it's action-packed, at the same time, it hangs on to some of those Milsim-type features. Like I said, this game, just like Squad, is very good when you communicate, when you talk to your squad, your teammates, and understand what's going on around you. But again, the thing that makes this game a little bit more playable and easier for, you know, other individuals coming from different titles to understand Milsims is that it's not required. You don't have to go ahead and communicate like you do in Squad. Squad, it's pretty much mandatory. If you don't talk, you're either going to get kicked out of your squad or you're going to have a really rough time. But in Hell Let Loose, I have went off countless times, not talking to anybody, just going on my own vibe, and I get every last experience I want out of a milsim while still enjoying, you know, the fast-paced action, because at the end of the day, I'm not ending games in Hell at Loose with five kills like I do in Squad. I can get, you know, 30, 40, even 50 kills sometimes just running around as infantry. And to be honest, I think it's all due to map design. Even though this game carries the same complexity that Squad does, where, you know, your squad leaders put down different rally points and places that you guys can spawn at, and you try to, you know, rearrange arrange your squad around the map to circulate on different locations and, you know, objectives that you had to take. Oh, it's a lot of thought process into the game and the map design, but still, the maps are completely different from Squad in every type of way. Squad is much more realistic and the environments are super duper complex. Like I said, you walk out into the open in Squad, you have absolutely no idea where an enemy can be, what's going on around you. It's kind of creepy at times, hence why you can barely get any kills in a game like that because you don't really want to go out. You kind of just defend and hold your bases and move when you have to move with your team. But in Hell Let Loose, the map designs are put together perfectly. I'm, I'm telling you right now, these are the best Milsim maps I've ever played on in any Milsim game ever. They are just put together in such a way that once again, like I said, it allows any type of player to run around and understand the map design and the layouts instantly in the blink of an eye. You know, if you're a new player, like I said, after two games, I already knew what I was doing pretty much across all the maps that have very tight lanes and also, of course, open territories. But at the end of the day, it's not really realistic map designs. They're not trying to shoot for 
total realism here in this type of milsim. They're trying to bring you the mechanics of a milsim while at the same time holding down, you know, an arcade shooter. Basically, the best way to put it, if you would enjoy this game or not, is Squad is more of a game for players who aren't looking for as much action, but more for a real-life experience. Yes, you are going to have some extremely intense skirmishes, and, you know, the battles are going to be insane. But it'll only happen a couple of times in maybe like an hour. A lot of your time is spent, you know, strategizing with your teammates, trying to position correctly, get the upper hand advantage, capture objectives, defend objectives, you know, communicate with the commander to understand the future strategy. It's a lot more to the picture of squad than just combat. Hell at loose, it gives you the same exact mechanics of what squad has. So if you enjoy the mechanics, the gunplay, the one-shot headshots, you know, the one tap to the body and stuff like that, you know, realistic, you know, time to kill... If you enjoy that stuff out of Squad, that has been directly dissected out of that game, implemented into Hell Let Loose, completely remodeled the maps to make them more arcadey and, you know, more uh, shooter friendly. And they dumbed down, I don't want to say the skill gap, but they dumbed down the complexity of some of these Milsim mechanics to make it more user friendly, allowing people to hop in and in the blink of an eye, automatically, you know, getting the feeling of the game and understanding what's going on. And of course, like I said earlier, communication is just the icing on top of the cake. You know what I'm saying? It's not really required. You can still play the game without it and you can play solo, but you still have to join a squad, obviously. You just don't have to talk. But playing with friends or communicating with the other people who are in your squad just enhances the whole environment. It makes it 10 times more fun. Now, luckily for PlayStation and Xbox, you guys do have cross-play. For PC, you can't cross-play with those individuals. So, with that being said, if you're on PC, you can only play with PC friends. But at the end of the day, I think it's worth checking out. Now, there is one thing that I would think would make this game outstanding. And that is a Vietnam DLC. Let's be honest here, Rising Storm is alright, but I don't think it's holding up too well. There hasn't been really too many Vietnam, you know, milsims lately, and I think with how this game runs, the engine that it's on, the way it plays, it obviously is pretty well optimized, and it has a really popular community. I think adding in a Vietnam DLC, which will be pretty simplistic, like in this game right here, you only see one gun per class that could do the same exact thing, I mean, Rising Storm did it, they could just copy and paste that in, and it would add so much more content for the overall community to play. Play around with and also i think that would make it a better selling point for a lot of players because again it is world war ii the main reason why i haven't tried this game in so long is because of exactly that i already had modern day milsims i thought why would i want to play this game but the way they designed it that's why and i'm telling you guys right now i know tons of people are going to be in the same boat as me where they're thinking yeah it's world war ii i don't want to play another world war ii game you know i'm done with that stuff i want modern day near futuristic that's why i enjoy but trust me on this one this game is definitely worth checking out and even though vietnam isn't modern day or anything like that at least the weapons fit you know a little bit more i guess it's not more popular than modern day but still you get more automatic weapons and stuff like that and a little bit more variety now this is the thing that will be the deciding factor for a lot of individuals and that is the price tag it sits at $40, and I know that's about $20 less than, you know, a triple-A budgeted game that has, you know, millions of dollars for its production. I understand that, but honestly, I think the $40 is definitely worth it. And also, the game goes on sale constantly, so if you just have a little patience, you could probably find it at a good sale. I just got my edition on Steam for pretty much almost half off. It's originally $40. Bucks. I got it for around, like, $22 to $25, which was, in my personal opinion, a steal. So if you're patient enough, you could probably find a much cheaper copy of this game. And I do want to say this as well because I know I've been hyping up this game as a lot of action. It's still a milsim. It's still slow. You're going to be spending a ton of time holding, you know, a position or a piece of cover, watching an angle, and either, you know, watching spawn points or something of that sort. It's going to be a lot of that type of gameplay in this title. But the difference is, it's a whole lot more action than any other milsim altogether. So just know coming into this game, if you're a Call of Duty player and you expect to be running and gunning and, you know, slide canceling and b-hopping everywhere, that's not the case, you know. You're going to be slowed down a lot, you know, quite a bit. But honestly, I think the overall experience 110% makes up for it. And the gunplay as well just feels, it's very satisfying. Again, unlike Squad where it's no sound effect, it's very hard to understand when you get a kill in Squad, you know. There's nothing, no indication except watching their body flop and assuming they're dead or going to confirm your kill. 
But in this game, it makes really satisfying noises when you get a headshot or even get a flesh wound or something of that sort. It's fun. Trust me. It is pretty darn fun. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you leave a like, a bonus, a hate it, leave a dislike. Also, if you're brand new and enjoy the content, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification button. Also, on chat me, there's two ways to do so. I have a Twitter and Discord, both will be down in the description. And also, if you want to catch me live streams of video games or over on Twitch, link that is in the description as well. But guys, thank you so much for tuning in. See you on the next one. Peace out.